Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and I will be your host today. And today I am joined by Amina El Kabani. Amina, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing so good. Thank you for having me. It feels so good to be back. And I'm really excited to get started today. We're doing something a little bit different than what I've done in the past. So I hope you really enjoy it. Yes, I am super excited for this because your work is stunning. I know you have so much to share with us today. So I just want to welcome everyone into the chat. I apologize for the little delay. We are having some technical difficulties, but we are here now and uh, hope everyone is doing well. Um, don't forget to start your day with the Photoshop Creative Challenge hosted by Jesus Ramirez every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. I just checked the last one out and it was super cool. He was creating some light rays in Photoshop and that's always really helpful because they can be a bit challenging. Plus, Jesus is great. Always a wealth of knowledge show. So be sure to check that out right before this stream uh, every day. And um, Amina, I won't waste any more time. I would love to kind of see what you have planned for today and um, and dive right into it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm a photographer, everyone. I live and breathe art and photography is one of the most instrumental keys in how I process the world. And when I don't have, you know, I guess the audacity to carry around my big clunky DSLR, I love to go and shoot around with my iPhone and I've done so for years. I used to just go around in the city when I lived in San Francisco and just take photos like as a form of therapy. And so usually when I've done these Adobe Lives, I've showed you in the past how to create collages in Photoshop. I've showed you how to elevate your DSLR photos. Today, I'm gonna show you how to elevate your iPhone photos, whether that be in your lifestyle, whether that be something that you wanna use for your marketing for your small business. If you're in a pinch and you're a musician and you need to make some cover art but don't have access to a DSLR, there are workarounds, you know? And so Lightroom is its just such a powerful tool. I feel so empowered by it and it really helps me convey what I want to through visual communication. And so today you're gonna learn how to do the same. I want to also encourage you while you're watching this stream, just pull up some of your favorite iPhone photos and edit alongside me just to get into the flow. A lot of the time it's like we feel held back by what we can and can't do or what we do and do not have. And so I think it's just really empowering to remember that we have all of the tools we need right in front of us and you are empowered to do whatever you want with them, whether that be, like I said, cover art, marketing materials, like the world is in your fingertips with your mobile device. It doesn't even have to be an iPhone. It can be an Android. So I've curated some of my favorite iPhone photos throughout the years. And I also last minute decided to open up a submission option for people in the community to send me their favorite iPhone photos and I would edit them live today. So we got some really cool submissions and I'm going to start with my own photos. So right now I have imported these selects into my Lightroom catalog and we're just going to start with this one here. It's really fun. It is a photo of one of my dear friends. He has one of these really cool old like VW buses. And so what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna open the develop space here. And as you can see, we have like a really cool situation going on already. The framing is really beautiful. And this is why it's so important to think about all of the different tools you have, because whether you're shooting with a DSLR or your mobile device, you have to think about composition. That's what really makes a photo shine is how you frame it. And you can think about all of the different ways to create a composition. But in the, I guess you could say the foreground is the steering wheel here and these this foliage peeking out from the window. So automatically I'm looking at this photo and I just noticed my friend peeking out in the right hand <laughs> corner. So that's that's a cute little easter egg but um i from looking at this photo already i can tell it's a bit overexposed where i don't want it to be and so my initial instinct would be to just level it out a bit by bringing down the exposure and that's already looking way better now what i am focused on is this foliage and everything else is kind of falling into the background so that already looks great 
I always like to also just bring down my highlights a bunch. I think it just evens out a photo really nicely and makes it feel very like rich, you know? And Absolutely. the whites, yeah. And I like to also just bring out the shadows as much as I can. So that already is just like such more of an even photo. Now I wanna bring a little bit more of a cinematic element to it and so one day I really hope to direct movies. I can't wait for my first like feature film. And <laughs> throughout the years, I have imagined these little movies in my head. And so anytime I take a photo, I kind of imagine it to be like a movie still. And so from there, I'm like thinking like, okay, well, if this was a still in a movie, what scene would this be? How would it, I want people to feel? And that's kind of like how I move when it comes to my editing process is I want to invoke a certain emotion, a feeling. And so with this, it was really like a getaway vacation for me. I was clearing my head. I felt warm. I felt the sun beating down on me. I, it was humid and all of these things, they make me feel warm. So I'm gonna bring that warmth up a lot in the temperature slide. And feel free to like, let me know in the chat as well what you're thinking or if you think I should do something specific or yeah, anything like that. Let me know if you like to edit your iPhone photos or if you usually just like post them as is, which I think is fine too. I, I love a documentary style of photo, you know? So this isn't necessary, but it is fun to enhance and also deepen your memories through this practice. It's, it's very therapeutic for me personally. So to create a little bit more smoothness here, I scrolled down to this detail panel on the right side of your Lightroom app. And by the way, we're using Lightroom Classic. I've used it since like 2014. And before that I was using Photoshop for a long time. And before that I was using InDesign. So I've been an Adobe girl for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> when did you first start like toying around with editing Anna? Oh my god, probably when I was in elementary school. As long as Photoshop has existed, pretty much I was playing around with it, making little dumb designs and stuff, and then got kind of more serious in high school and started to get into kind of some ad campaigns and making posters for the local town. And and then I just fell in love with it. <laughs> that is so cool. I have a very similar story. That's amazing. That's I love awesome. this for us. <laughs> yes, I know. So when did you first get into it? Well, I would say high school as well. Um, in seventh and eighth grade, I like joined the yearbook, you know, club and had a blast doing it and creating designs. And then when I was in high school, I stuck with it and I learned Photoshop and InDesign. And that's where we were making our book. So it was really fun. And I started, you know, toying around with compositing in Photoshop around the same time as well um, in my art classes. And I remember I made like a, one of our assignments was to make a, a film po poster and insert yourself into it. And I Photoshopped my face onto Zoe Deschanel's body for a 500 <laughs> days of summer poster. <laughs> I love that, that is awesome. <laughs> That was hilarious. I wish I could see it. I can see it in my head and it was just so terribly done, but I'm glad that I've spent a lot more time over the years figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to go through that in order to kind of learn. And I think one of the first projects that I did was um, creating text or yeah, writing a word out and then making it look the way that the or what the word said like hot Whoa. you know it had like flames coming off of it or something and that was kind of one of my first experiences compositing and I was like this is so fun I want to do this forever <laughs> that's amazing that sounds like a really cool assignment I'd love to see that yeah, it was super cool. And of course, you know, in high school, we had the simple brains and the simple words, but I feel like you could get really imaginative with it and really expand on it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So by the way, guys, what I've been doing, I've just kind of been trying to create like a portal for you to kind of imagine yourself in this moment. And I hope you can feel the humidity through this photo because it was hot. It's actually pretty <laughs> hot in LA right now too. So I'm like, ooh, <laughs> but it feels great. I love the summer. I'm a Leo, it's Leo season. I feel yes. great. So yeah, yes. but what I just did to enhance this photo so far, so far I've brightened 
and then also again brought down the exposure so i kind of just toggled with it to see what felt good what felt the most alluring into the image i want to create like an invitation for you to kind of melt into it and so i brought the shadows all the way up kind of just making them a little bit more um, visible or like less visible so it's not as dark now you can see the details that were in the shadows and then i brought the black details down so now it's a bit more contrasty as well and yeah i really like it how it is no offense to my friend but i think i'm gonna have to just crop them out of this image <laughs> to give it a little bit more mystery just like so <laughs> <laughs> now you can imagine yourself sitting there. Sorry, Robbie, if you're watching this. Um, yeah, and then I'm kind of leaning towards creating a, a mask here, this linear gradient mask. I really like these because if you don't want to like spend time masking out with a brush and you have something simple like this, you can just drag your linear gradient mask down and all of this that's highlighted red, you can now adjust and it won't affect anything else. And it'll be a nice, smooth gradient. So this, I kind of want a little bit brighter there and I'm feeling out, okay, well, I do want it to match below. It looks a little bit too green. So I might just click on this little box right here and see if I can mimic the color below. And it's a little bit more peach. That feels almost right. Now I'm going to just increase the highlights a bit here as well. Bring the whites down. I think it needs a little bit more pink in there. Yeah. And so all of you watching, I'm not sure what level you're at, whether you started editing photos a year ago or this is your first time today, but I will just tell you now it becomes addicting. Like it is <laughs> a lifestyle. And I just really hope you use these tools to kind of help you untangle your brain and, and create deeper memories for yourself through these images. Because I know we're all snapping photos throughout our day, right? We're posting them in our story, we're posting them, we're sending them to friends, whatever. And then we're going to look through them when our phone tells us, oh, look what you did a year ago. But sometimes they're washed out. Like, I just want you to have higher quality memories that you can dive deeper into. So that's that's the whole purpose of today. But, I yeah. love that. And I really love how you said that you're you you're creating a mood here and um, based on your memory. I think that's really cool because I think we can take pictures on our. Yeah. Look at the difference there. Like, that's incredible. And it's gorgeous. <laughs> we snap photos all day long on our phones and we may feel a certain way in that moment, but we don't think about what will we remember 50 years from now? How can we make our friends who we send these pictures to feel the same way we felt in that moment? And I just, I love how you said that. I love that you're creating this warmth here. Like it's really making me feel like I'm there and witnessing this moment with you. That's the whole goal. Thank you so much for the <laughs> affirmation because it feels so good to think about it that way. And I'd like us to just also just reframe the way we take pictures because I'm very like legacy oriented. I'm very much so like an archivist. I forgot how to turn this off. Uh oh, there we go. Um, <laughs> by the way, if you ever want to view a photo side by side, you can click this little guy in the bottom left corner and to full screen it, there is this this little tab right here. I guess it says loop view. Great. Good to know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I like us to think about things such as like, imagine who's going to find this photo in 50 years. Like I want to elongate the lifespan of this photo. I don't want all of these iPhone photos or mobile phone images to die when I need to upgrade my new phone or whatever. I want to be able to cherish these memories and give them life. And by editing them and spending t quality time with our images like this we're really breathing life into them and extending the lifespan and and yeah giving them more richness yeah yeah i love that so much i mean you think of seeing like our parents film photos or slides and everything from our grandparents generation when you see those photos and you see the texture that the film gives them and 
you can really place yourself in that moment. And I think we have lost that to the digital technology of the iPhone. And I love that you're bringing that back in because I feel like, yeah, it's just, it's super cool. It's like such a, a moment in time right here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Fun fact, I actually photographed an album cover that is called A Moment in Time. Oh. Shout out to my friend <laughs> Ruggender. He is an incredible musician. He's a, a violinist and an incredible producer. So go check out that album and the cover art because I made it and I think it's pretty good. <laughs> but That's super cool. I digress. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so right now I'm looking at a few more photos from the same trip. Um, this was, by the way, this is like a really old iPhone photo. This might be like iPhone 6 or something. I don't know. And the fact that we were able to bring those colors out of like this memory that I kind of just extracted from my brain is really cool, even with an older iPhone. So you can do this with any generation of iPhone or any generation of your photos. I started like going on these intentional photo walks back in maybe 2014 when I got it seriously into photography. Um, and yeah, it's really, it, it sticks with me. It's really how I process my memories in my life. So I hope that this inspires you to do the same. Um, because I have a few images from the same trip or same moment, like these are all from the same moment, I can actually go ahead and copy and paste some of this edit and adjust accordingly. And I'm not sure if you guys do that, but it's an amazing little hack. Thank you, Adobe, for making it so easy. <laughs> Um, so what I do, I believe I just click command and then I click on the image next to it and however many images I want to highlight from this moment. Um, I won't highlight that one. So I'll highlight these next two and then I'm going to go ahead and click sync and it's going to sync up all of those like details that I edited so I don't have to do it again, except for these, which is great. I don't want to mimic my mask unless, of course, I want to. I can click that. But yeah, so you can customize it. It's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and click synchronize and let's see these results. Wow. Mm, that's so cool. <sighs> that's crazy. I love <laughs> that's, it. That's so oh. insane. I'm, and it, it wow. immediately changes the mood of the picture. It really does. It really does. I'm, I'm amazed every time like this really wow. is just such a stark difference and it literally feels like a movie still. Which it is does the goal and you can almost feel this is kind of woo woo of me but you can feel it throughout your body when you look at the difference in the mm. picture like the moment you applied that I felt this whole sense of like oh that feels really nice it was such a pleasant moment like it we I think we had gotten poke or ice cream like one of the two um and it was like humid rain it was beautiful. But anyway, this is just such a powerful tool, y'all. Like I this is giving me so much joy to look at and to move through. And it is such a visceral feeling when you can like bring it to such a specific place exactly the way you remembered it. It's really yeah. special. And I just want that for all of you. So this is so much fun. This one yeah. here also has a similar vibe now and it just feels so much more moody. I would actually maybe go in and edit a little bit further. This one, I don't think I want to touch, so I'm going to leave it as so. But maybe maybe I would bring it down a bit, actually. A couple notches just to show you the range, you know? Look at that depth mm. that it created. It's really, really incredible. Not to toot my own horn. I'm like, okay, I guess this is what today is about. But <laughs> hey, I think it's amazing. I will toot your horn as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow, that was a beautiful moment as well. It was nighttime, but I do want to see a little bit more of the blues. And it's really cool that these clouds are back there. So let's see if we can bring out this blue hue a little bit more. Hmm. It's not really working out. Well, good thing Adobe has like this really cool feature called it's a it's a new mask feature actually. I'm pretty sure it's AI powered, which is dope to me. I think it's the future that we are working with technology in this way and it's just continuing to advance. But this little round 
icon um, takes you to all of the masks that are available. And we're going to just test out this select sky feature to see if it works as well on iPhone photos as it does on DSLR photos, because I've used it a couple of times with the DSLR photos and it looks great. So let's check it out. That's a pretty good job. It even like yeah. left the tree unselected. That's impressive. Okay. That's amazing. Okay, cool. So now let's <laughs> let's see what we can do with this. I'm just going to go straight for a color adjustment here. Whoa. You can just click Ooh. away and make it feel surrealistic if you want to. I am very much live in that like liminal space of I want to... I feel like I see the world in a very surrealistic way. I'm a Pisces rising for anyone who's into astrology. And life just feels like a daydream at all times. And sometimes I'm like, hmm. But photography was a powerful tool for me when I discovered it because I wanted to share the beauty that I see in the world and add more of it into the world as well and offer my unique perspective. And that's what it really empowers me to do and empowers all of us to do, really show the world how we see and hopefully give people a new perspective. Yes. Uh, I feel like I need you in the back of my mind when I'm creating things to be to tell me the why behind why I'm doing it, because sometimes I start doing it and I'm like, hmm, I'm not sure why I'm doing this, but it looks cool. And I feel like you just explained it so eloquently. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've literally been like, uh, I've been calling myself a steward of creative clarity lately. Oh, I yes. love that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's really what I feel like I am. I I like to really hold space to help people like find that clarity, discover their why. And um, it feels good because I need that too. You know, like me 90% of the time saying these things, it's because I need those reminders every single day. Yeah. So podcast coming soon, actually this week. <laughs> really? Yeah. <gasps> okay. I'm listening to that for sure. I was going to say, yeah. I need to like find a way to listen to your daily like meditations or words of wisdom because you got it all. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just, I feel so seen right now. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. All of this is literally like just so meditative. Yeah. yeah so super cool. back to this photo, it's looking pretty good like I'm zooming in this could use some work but overall I feel like the essence of it is just feeling so much more resonant than it was before let's let's take a peek at where we're at yeah yeah wow that just gave it again so much more depth so much more richness and I didn't even I haven't touched any of these presets guys by the way guys That's gals so cool. days and thems <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yeah. everyone. I hope everyone's having a great day, by the way. Yes, everyone's really enjoying this. Very inspiring and imaginative. I'm so glad. So, yeah, I feel like I, that feels good to me. I haven't touched any of the the presets. We've literally just been working with this, this edit station on the right hand side, this modular space. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave that as is. It feels accurate to my memory, so. We'll leave it as is. Let's move on. I feel like, hmm, let's ask the chat what kind of image they'd like to see edited next. We've got beach photos, concert photos, uh, park photos, studio photos, photos of neon. I actually take a lot of photos of neon just in the day-to-day -day life. I use, I kind of create like little scavenger hunts for myself for, so that I can create digital collage assets to use later and neon is a staple in my digital collages if you haven't seen you can check out my instagram amina yasmin a-m-i-n-a-y-a-s-m-i-n with an underscore at the end and my website is linked there as well you can check out all my past work so you can get a feel for for what i do and and how i do it while you're here but yeah, these are some of like the little Easter eggs from some of my collages that I've just photographed with my iPhone and thrown in and have created like portals, you know? So yeah, some some Paris photos. We edited some of these travel photos, the DSLR versions in the last Adobe Live. So it's fun to show you the reverse, the iPhone versions. 
Yeah, it's so cool. And it's making me think about my photos in a whole different way now. Everything that I have on my phone that I'm like, what do I do with this? That's and so much. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many little pieces. Um, and I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. are you mostly editing your iPhone pictures on your computer or on your phone? So back in the day, I used to use my phone a lot for editing, but because I'm on social media a lot and I text a lot, I really like to take myself away from my phone and work with my laptop because I think it just keeps the screen time a little bit less. So my phone is not here and at least my right. screen is like this far from me or so. Um, yeah, but I think that you can do either. Like, obviously, Lightroom, they have so many different versions. Adobe has so many different versions. You have the mobile version, which is just as powerful if you want some quick editing on the go. Or if you're like me and you want to spend some quality time with the images and see them on, like, a bigger screen, uh, get into the nitty-gritty detail. Laptop is great. iPad is great. All of the different tools, it, whatever you have, pretty much, is, like, just use the the tools that you have available to you is the important thing. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. Um, and then after you've edited these photos on your computer, what do you usually do with them? And how? what do you find is the best way for you to kind of store these as memories and not just like lost in your Lightroom catalog or lost on your phone? Do you have any recommendations for that? Yeah, I I honestly recommend for everyone to print out your photos, like mm. make a old style photo album, have fun with it, like really the same way you have a relationship with your friends and your family, your colleagues, have a relationship with these memories and print them out, make a book or make a collage or make a vision board. Um, but on a technical standpoint, I would typically just go and export and then I would save it to a specific location on my external hard drive so that I make sure everything is safe and secure. Then I would back it up. But you don't have to do all that, but I do recommend it if you're not going to print it out. Um, printing it out is really fun, though. And sometimes when I make a new edit, I like to export it and then airdrop it to my phone so that I can use it as like a screensaver or something like that. And I also like to uh, share my photos on social media, Twitter, Instagram. And personally, it's like a really fun practice for me to go back in time and just like, that's that's how I use social media is like a time machine. And so mm. sharing these images regularly, kind of like my own personal visual diary feels yes. like a good way to log my memories. But yeah, I used to sell prints and that was really fun. And I still, to this day, have a desire to make a book with all my photos. I just need to like sit down and do it. But yes. there's a lot of different options to do that. And yeah, I think you would have a lot of fun with it the same way that you would scrapbook back in the day. So yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I love that idea. And I feel like too often we don't print out our photos. And I think that's a great idea, especially with these being such important and beautiful memories. So yeah, I love that. 100%. Um, so it sounds like the chat would like to see maybe some people edits. I love this idea. Okay, great. So now is a good time to dive into the some of these um, submissions that I got from the community. Some people sent me some really good portraits that I'm excited to dive into. Um, we're gonna start with my friend Iman. She is a chef and she is a social justice advocate. She's a plant-based chef, by the way, and she has a book on the way called Alive Again, The Gift of Eating Well. Uh, this is a portrait. I'm pretty sure it looks like a casting photo. And so this is great because I'm sure a lot of you might, you know, be taking photos at home with your iPhone. I'm going to show you how to like even it out. So first thing I would do to this image would be just to crop in a little bit. This black edge on the left feels a bit distracting to me. So I would crop that in and maybe just make sure that she is a little bit more centered. So let's see. That feels good in terms of composition wise. So that's nice. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna look, see if we can get the her skin tone to pop a little bit more. So let's maybe just make it a bit warmer and bring down some of the highlights so it doesn't like wash her out. That already feels a lot better. Feels like she's got some um, vitality there. Definitely. Yeah. 
we're going to add some contrast by bringing down the black aspect here. And then let's check out some of this shadow. It's like, I want to see the details in her curls. And so I am just toggling the shadow here to see what feels best. And if you want to zoom in, I also recommend doing that. You can just toggle with your fingers on your trackpad in Lightroom Classic or however you want to zoom in, just so you can really like hone in on specific details while you're editing. So yeah, we're gonna just bring down the exposure a bit. I always like to create some noise reduction because I think it just smooths out an image really nicely. Yeah, and then add a bit of sharpening. Uh, too much. We're gonna bring it down a lot. And then she looks great. Yeah. Wow, that looks really good. Um, if you don't want it so, so warm, you can also just make it neutral but i think that warmth really works with stuff like this especially like it's important to be mindful of the natural light situation that you're in and so it looks like the light was streaming in pretty nicely and so it kind of makes sense to accentuate the warmth of the image because that is that's what feels natural with the way that light was hitting her in the first place yeah that looks beautiful gorgeous oh so amazing what you can do with these iPhone photos, usually, you know, there's a lot of, uh, how do I say, like technology purists out there, you know, who will tell you to only work with raw images and this and that. And I'm not sure. I feel like iPhones might have a raw image option these days. But mm -hmm. if you have old iPhone photos that might not have had that capability, don't let that stop you from editing them because you can obviously still get a great result, even if it's not so crispy it's still again sentimental for you or for your own specific use and purpose absolutely and i think uh everything you've taught us so far is such a great reminder of just using these photos that we take again every single day for ourselves and getting rid of that idea of perfectionism and and the need to always have to have everything be a raw image or be ready for social media or be ready for print or whatever. These are moments that are going to last us a lifetime. And I think it's really cool that you're just like getting into the editing for the sake of it and not for any said purpose. Yeah, thank you for that. I feel like this is unlocking things for me too. Like as a photographer that I've been, I've been doing professional photography for like eight years now, seven, seven, eight years. And, and sometimes I get a little bit like, uh, jaded is not the word, but a little bit tired of editing my raw photos. And I want to be like bringing myself back into that why feeling mm. right and I used to be one of those people that would carry my DSLR around with me everywhere but it can get exhausting and like my phone is just as powerful so leaning more into that gives me a new like perspective and just a fresh inspiration to get back into what I love which is image editing and bringing beauty into the world and you know really just enhancing the life experience I'm already having you know it yeah. feels very connective so 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 cool I love it yeah so these this is another image of Iman um we this was actually some of the BTS photos we took from shooting her book cover so this is fun to revisit and so I'm looking at it now it already looks a bit too bright blown out and so I'm gonna bring down the highlights I'm gonna bring down the white, bring up the shadows a bit so I can see those details in the shadows. And then I'm gonna bring down the black just to make it a bit richer while still maintaining those details in her dress. That's nice. Yeah, that looks good. And again, I love adding warmth to an image, so that's just what I'm going to do almost every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring down the exposure a bit. There. Looking good. Mm. 
And again, noise reduction, a little bit of sharpening. I've kind of got it down to a science. So yeah. it usually just goes, like I usually just adjust the top, um, using the top module here first. And you don't have to have a specific formula. I would just recommend trusting your eye and developing your eye. And the more you use this program and just trust yourself that you see what you want to see and and know like how to achieve a certain result it doesn't matter exactly how you achieve it it's the fact that you know how to achieve it and that you trust your eye in what you're creating and so in order to even develop your eye you have to just be active you have to go out and shoot you have to come back and edit and i just recommend having fun with it because it's it's so like meditative you know anything that d that requires deep focus you're going to have a lot of great benefits from from participating in including this process yes. just another another note on mindfulness <laughs> yeah such good advice do you meditate a lot i feel like you have very higher self wisdom yes. here yes i do i am such a woo woo meditation type person i like to meditate um at least once a day but sometimes twice a day i like wow. to go up on my roof and like meditate it's actually really peaceful <laughs> that's amazing yeah thank you how about you do you like to meditate i like to i try to but sometimes i'm not very good with it but i i am super into all of the woo woo stuff i hate that word but i feel I know. like you know people sometimes don't align with it, but I'm very much in alignment with everything you're saying. And yeah, I, I would like to get more into meditation. Yeah. I mean, I feel like your work also is so meditative. Like it, it definitely yeah. gives me that, that higher self experience or like that liminal dream world space, which I very much also like live within, which is so cool. Yes. And I think that's very much my why is because that's my time to kind of like put that higher self and meditative self into my work and like relax into it so mm, that's beautiful I love yeah. that we can we can connect like this through art I think of it as like art alchemy you know totally yes oh, I love that um Sam asked is there any photo subject matter or editing you feel is a bit out of your comfort zone Ooh. yes I I have specific formulas personally that I like to follow. Um, color grading, I feel very comfortable in. Compositing, I feel really comfortable in. But creating like certain effects, I haven't exactly leaned into yet, which is fun because that gives me more to learn and more to experiment with. And it's going to keep me on my toes and like excited to continue this lifelong journey of like being an artist and yes. adding more tools to my toolbox. So I'm excited to actually tackle learning how to uh, create like some blur in my images in specific places. I've watched a few tutorials recently and I just mm. haven't applied it yet. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I shot an album cover recently and, and the client asked me to create like this certain blur effect that I don't exactly know how to do yet. So I have some homework to do after this actually. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like a, a motion type blur or. Yeah. Kind of like some cool. motion blur and some like layering mm. of the image that will create a feeling of like, yeah, like movement. Um, but, you know, keeping it sharp in some other places. And so. Yeah, I'm excited to experiment with that. There's always more to learn, which is cool. It's like you can be eight years deep in the game, but there's yep. still more to learn. And that's that's what's so cool about being an artist is that you're never going to stop learning. As much as I am a teacher, I am still a student. And I love that. Yes. Oh, so many good words of wisdom today. And I could not agree with that more. I am always learning. And I think that's the beautiful thing of these Adobe live streams is you can learn, people can learn all day long, totally for free. And uh, I love being here with artists like you who just have, are so in touch with your work and why you do it and what you do. It's very, very inspiring. <laughs> this is a very fulfilling space to be in so thank you for being here with me everyone and Anna like this is so much fun and I'm just happy to be sharing my process with you um yeah. so I 
final I finalized this image I would say I think it feels pretty good and although it's like a very natural edit it feels a lot more rich which is my word of the day um, a lot more rich than it did before and now it has like these juicy tones that weren't necessarily there before um, I could also if I wanted to like crop in some more and play with that but I kind of just I love this composition and in terms of um like finding, oh, I didn't want to do that. In terms of finding, like imagine she wanted to use this for marketing promo. She could easily add some text in this like uh, negative space on the left-hand side beside her, which is nice to be mindful of when you are creating comp compositions is like, am I going to add, you know, graphic elements here? Maybe I will go into Photoshop later and like remove her entirely from this image and place her on a simple background and create a new composition but there's like so many ways you can think about what you're doing and what you plan to do next it's like a game <laughs> yeah yeah so let's move on to another image here i think i will just copy paste this this image this edit that i did on the previous image because they do have the same lighting situation and again, all you would do is click command and then, or hold down command and then click on the image that you want to copy the edits to. And then you would go ahead and click sync. It's gonna synchronize that edit and bam. We've so got nice. a new energy. This is very fall energy. Yeah. It's kind of cool, too, because it very much takes on the feeling that you get when you're in a soft lit studio mm -hmm. and it almost has like sometimes we can think of studios as feeling very bright and harsh. And this has such a nice, intimate feel like you, you can sense that maybe it was just you and her in the room and working on this together. And it's it really gives a whole different mood. That's exactly what it was. This is actually um, in a great studio that I collaborate with frequently and called Big Time Studio LA. Mm, cool. If you're looking for a studio in LA, they've got pretty much everything you would need. It's actually lovely and very spacious and I love working with them. But yeah, I love how this came out. It's kind of crazy to think about. I, I actually kind of want to show you guys the DSLR version, if I can just pull it up real quick, um, for contrast, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, do I have it here? Hmm. hmm. I think I do. This is some from, yeah, we, we did a whole shoot for her. Her book release, it was re originally released as a um, an ebook, but now it's actually going to be a physical book. Uh, that's this year. so exciting. Yeah, I'm super excited for her. All of the recipes are crazy good. Wow, that is amazing. I'm sure that feels so good, too, to have something come out as a hardcover book that you can hold in your hands. Very awesome. Truly, truly so cool. Let's see if I can find it. Well, I'll give you an example of something we shot that day. It's like similar energy. Yeah. This one's That's cooler, so but beautiful. But yeah, now they can both kind of work together and they both have different feelings, even though it was from the same shoot. So that's another way to think about it is like how you can create rollout assets with, you know, a blend of DSLR photos and iPhone photos and all of the different ways you can, you know, roll it out. Yes. It's fun. So yeah, these are some other submissions that we received. They're really cool. Um, maybe I will edit some of these of my friend Skylar. They sent these to me and I was just like, whoa, this is an iPhone photo. That's crazy. Yeah, it looks so, so good. It's already incredible. Let's see I mean, here. The, the iPhone is just getting better and better by the day. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> It really is. It's actually insane. Like, this must have been taken on like portrait mode or something. Mm, <laughs> but yeah. this is this is really crispy. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, all I'm doing here is again toggling these adjustment bars and 
bringing the exposure down i'm gonna bring out the highlights a little bit more let's see how that looks and feels and it's really just a process of like feeling into it like really letting your intuition guide you and your eye guide you and the more trust you develop with your eye the more of a streamlined process this will be for you it does take some time i remember when i first started editing in lightroom i was creating some very very overly bright images or overly mm. saturated and i i quickly well not quickly i eventually learned how to um make it feel more realistic but i think when you first get started it gets a little bit exciting and you're like i want to try this yeah um <laughs> i think your style kind of changes too i mean i have noticed that my style sometimes will change from week to week based on like what i'm putting into my edits and everything and you look back maybe a month ago oh why did i edit it like that because i've learned so much more and yeah, I used to edit very bright as well. <laughs> wow. This just got so warm and inviting so quickly. It really did. This tool is insane, everyone. I, I cannot be like a bigger fan of Lightroom than I already am. <laughs> <laughs> Number one fan, it's me. <laughs> yes. Wow, look at that. That is amazing because... You didn't even do that much to it. And it just totally came to life with this beautiful feeling. Wow. This feels like a casting headshot and I would totally cast them. Yep. Like yeah. that just feels so beautiful. And their skin just is like popping right now. Like it's just stunning. Yeah. That took me 0.5 seconds, everyone. Like that's all you need. That's all you yeah. need so cool lightroom also has really cool presets and by the way there's a lot of incredible photographers out there that have presets available for you that they specifically created that you can buy and import into lightroom so that's something to think about i used to have like a really cool like visco pack of presets i don't know what happened they they disappeared somewhere when i switched laptops but yep. that was really fun to play with and and yeah Let's just, I want to show you some of these presets here that I think are just built in with Lightroom when you download it. But yeah, it's already like just giving mm. so many options, you know? So, so cool. It's got like entirely, entire presets for portraits. Whoa. Yeah. That's really fun. Ooh, I like, I really like that orangey one. Oh, and that one is That's so That's nice. Yeah. That's really nice. Let's, let's do that. And then I would just maybe bring up the exposure a bit more again and voila, that's beautiful. Yeah. Gorgeous. Wow. Oh, I'm going to post all of these, by the way, later on Instagram and oh, Behance. Okay. That way you guys can check out all of the featured photographers and people who submitted photos and I'll make sure to include their name and their Instagram for you. So be on the lookout for that. But that this, would is, be great. this is so fun. It's what funny when you, next? when you Sorry. edit, mm -hmm. it's, it's really cool because when you put these moods into it, I can almost hear the whole environment come to life. Like I start to hear birds chirping and people talking and music playing. It's like, it's so um, incredible. Like you give this whole mood to it. And I know I've kind of said that already, but it's very, very powerful. It's, it's a powerful tool. Like visualization is everything. And the more you can get that specific mood, right? Like imagine, imagine what you can manifest when you get these details just so succinctly like dialed in, like you yes. can create vision boards for yourself. You can yes. download some cool stock imagery from Adobe stock. You can go and edit them and you can create a feeling for yourself and viscerally feel it and yeah. dive into that feeling. So just a thought. Oh, I love that. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'm going to try that later, actually. I Maybe know, we'll I'm dive like... into some of that tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to make a note of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, so Leo season feels very abundant to me and lush. And so let's edit this 
gorgeous photo of some fruit. I see some legs in the background, so maybe I will crop that. <laughs> That's really nice. Mm, wow. I am now hungry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so again, we're doing our signature um, routine here. We're going to adjust the exposure. We're going to bring up the highlights. And we have some really natural light to work with, really gorgeous natural light to work with here. Um, it seems like the shadows want to kind of fade into the background, which is really cool. So we're going to like give it that high contrast feeling. I'm going to bring the whites down so that the colors pop more. And actually, let's see how it looks when I bring down the highlights all the way. This looks like it could now be used as like a marketing asset for a chef or for a juicing company mm -hmm. or something like that. It looks like you could receive this in an email with like text in the bottom right corner that says something like fresh fruit delivery on yes. sale or something like that, you know, totally. and this is an iPhone photo again. So it's like you have such powerful devices at your fingertips. I, you guys can keep track of how many times I say that <laughs> <laughs> on this live stream. I just really want to drill it in. Like we, we have so much power in our hands. We've got to really remember to use it more. Yes. And there's so many different ways that you can transform images using this program. Like it's, actually wild um so now this is just giving me such a different feeling and i want to really like just keep going in that direction of like the dramatic contrast and so i'm going to use another linear gradient here and just really darken this right hand right top corner and i might do that on the bottom left corner as well so i'm going to click and add another mask this is so much fun i know i'm having a blast me too i love seeing it come together and see everything and just hearing you speak is very nice <laughs> i'm so glad i'm like oh, i'm totally relaxed right now <laughs> i'm glad i actually like i'm really excited to start leaning i actually make music as well okay um, cool and I like to make like soundscapes and guided meditations. So you can expect those really soon too. Um, and maybe I'll just start like an ASMR editing channel. <laughs> you totally should. <laughs> like bring down the highlights. Hey, that's a, Ever that's so a true slightly. thing. <laughs> I wonder if anyone has done that yet. That's a great idea for editing. Uh, imagine like <laughs> soft ocean sounds in the I background. <laughs> custom sound bowl sounds as well yes. like that's that's what I'm giving for sure yeah. um wow this just looks delicious like it's let so me just zoom cool. in on that oh wow I love that and I love how you darkened it because I feel like most people might have brightened this and really made it pop more and I I just love the way you edited it it looks so cool that's nuts like that's just beautiful and it looks yeah. like a painting now i really do feel like mm. photography is painting with light and it's painting with your camera and you're just creating like like when we think of it that way it's just so different because yeah. it's like you're freeze framing time you're creating compositions that might not ever exist again i mean of course you can recreate it but that moment that specific moment is now what's the word um immortalized yeah yeah so wow. great if it was brighter i think what's cool or something to think about is that when an image has a certain level of exposure when you bring it up like this it just loses so much and so it's like when but you can always bring an exposure down and like you can um what's the word you can retain a lot of that detail when you bring it mm. down versus when you bring it up. That was like one of the first things I learned when I was learning photography and editing it was like, okay, if I'm going to shoot an image, I am typically going to want to usually, you know, make the exposure pretty even. But if I, if I want to play with it further or 
maintain certain details i will actually shoot a little bit underexposed yeah um because i would rather have the exposure be a bit lower than than blown out you know yep yeah i remember learning that in school you can always brighten it you can bring it back in but you can't ever get those blown out highlights back exactly exactly so yeah this is fun i feel like i could do a lot with this in terms of like color grading so let's let's push it further this is yeah. a fun one to play with it's just very visually pleasing and makes me want to go and eat fruit <laughs> do any of you in the chat like to go to the farmer's market let me know yeah i'm such a farmer's market girl me too and we have this incredible farm stand right down the road from us and we go there pretty much every single day to get fresh fruit and veggies for dinner and it's just like it's such a wonderful experience being able to eat that farm to table right away it's so nice it's my favorite ritual as of lately yeah, yeah. getting that fresh fruit like whatever's in season I go with my friends and roommates like every Sunday. It's actually very sweet. <laughs> uh, that's so nice. Do you go to the one in downtown LA? I do. I do. Yeah. It's like fifth and spring every yes. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yep. We used to come <laughs> there all the time. It was always so much fun. Wow. It's, it's a blast. I truly love it. So what I did here uh, for everyone watching, I just went down to this color grading module, which is really fun because you can adjust different aspects of the image and like isolate them so you have mid-tones you have your shadows you have your highlights and you can also adjust how well they're blended and you know bring them down bring them up this really looks like this looks like a book cover like i would buy this book <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and again i'm just kind of intuitively like toggling until i like what i see it, it you don't have to really overthink it more than that because the tools already made it easy for you to let go and, and kind of like collaborate with the technology. So we're yeah. just kind of playing around at this point, which just feels really good. Like now I could I could totally print this out and use it as a reference photo for a painting. That's actually how oh. how and why I got into photography in the first place. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I um I loved like I went to a really cool art-based high school in Sacramento. That's where I grew up. And uh, yeah, we had an incredible art program. And the the teacher that I had was also like a photographer and she would go out and print out photos from her travels and like adjust them in Photoshop to give them contrast like this or, or certain um, graphic feelings. And she would print them out and they would be like custom, you know, and we would pick yeah. out our favorite photo or whatever and we would draw it and that would be our assignment uh, to use a certain medium or like learn a technique. It was really fun. And so I started getting really excited about doing the same for my own work. That's so eventually, awesome. eventually I want to have a, a painting exhibition of of work that I've photographed and edited and then referenced all on my own. That's like the next iteration i feel like that'll be in 10 years or something who knows yeah someone's got to sponsor me for that kind of thing like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but it's so fun to think about things that way like i know i just know it would be so therapeutic to paint all of these details yeah and how often are you doing paintings like this well i don't know if you can see in the background but I have some paintings back there. Um, yeah, I see a couple. <laughs> I was actually admiring them when we first got onto the stream, just based, even though it's so tiny, like the colors. They're, they're so but... small back there. I'm like... <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, I used to paint a lot more. I want to make more time for it. And so I created like a little painting nook for myself. Oh, and cool. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll print out this one and, and go paint it later. I actually really enjoy this for some reason. This one is by Iman Benet, um, who is the girl right here that we were editing. Mm. And yeah, she's great. Definitely she... let us know on your Instagram if you do end up painting it. I would love to kind of follow along with your process. I sure will. I sure will. Hmm. Okay. How about a selfie next? Okay. Let's see. This is 
a dear friend, Sofia Guerrero, and she submitted this last night. I thought it was so sweet. And I know that we all take a bunch of selfies. We want to preserve ourselves in the moment. And especially when there's a gorgeous sunset in the background like this. Yeah. So let's just see how we can elevate this image or, or make it a little bit more rich in these colors. Thank you, Sophia, for sending me this. Um, I hope you're watching. But yeah, so again, we're going to bring down the exposure, bring up the highlights. Let's see. There's a couple different energies you could really dive into with a photo like this. But yeah, let's let's see what we've got. It's already pretty warm. And so I wonder what mm, we don't like the cool temperature. We like warmth. Yeah. Anytime I try to veer away from warmth, I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to work for me. But yeah, she looks gorgeous here. We're going to create a little bit of noise reduction. We're going to maybe just go down here to this calibration tool. And so a fun thing that someone has taught me before about this module is that if you want to keep something feeling natural, you don't really want to toggle too far outside of this these first like tick marks and I fully agree I think that a little bit of a an adjustment is is nice sometimes um but but going over here it's just unrealistic and and you know same with this this green one it's kind of just balancing it out here yeah that's nice and so I feel like honestly this this photo looks great already um, yeah. We just kind of like evened it out a bit more and like leveled it out, made her skin pop. This is closer to how she looks in real life. The sky is a little bit more saturated without getting too unrealistic. Sometimes the sky would be really bright and really colorful. So it's cool that we can bring that out in the image and like show, show off how beautiful this sunset must have been in real life. Hmm. Let's see, maybe... Maybe with something like this, like, I feel like when we're editing selfies of ourselves, we're maybe not spending too, too much time. But for fun, let's use a select sky mask and see what we can do. Because maybe we do want to get a little bit surrealistic. Yes. Okay, it did a pretty great job of selecting the sky for us. Thank you, Lightroom. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go ahead and see if we can just add some fun color effects here make it feel more pink or purple add some more blues that feels that feels actually pretty hmm we don't want it to feel too unrealistic since it is a selfie so let's keep it over here yeah that's nice and again i'm just kind of feeling into and trusting my eye as to what looks good and what's going to look good once it's finished uh, now it looks like the highlights are a little bit too bright for me, so I'm just going to bring them down a bit. And let's see here, bring out the shadows, the details in the shadows a bit more. Let's bring down the whites. Mm, let's bring some of the whites back here. That's nice. Yeah, I like That's that. That's pretty nice. I think that that is a good place to stop with that. And then to exit out of your editing space you just click back on the icon and if you want to re-edit that you can go ahead and just click this tiny square which houses your mask <laughs> yes um let's see let's compare once more mm. yeah yeah i like that Very cool that feels great cool how are we feeling chat are we liking what we're seeing? Is there anything specific you want to see? We've got some submissions that include food photography. I don't know about you, but I love food photography. We've got yes. some travel photos, it looks like. We've got some more of my own as well. Let's see. Yeah, let us know in the Concert chat photos. what you all want to see. And um, and then, yeah, whatever you feel like you want to work on, and I'll let you know what the chat says. Amazing. I feel really called to these confetti photos because mm, that was cool. such a fun, visceral moment experience. Like I one of my favorite artists is Tame Impala. And this was a Tame Impala concert. 
they just blasted confetti everywhere, which I know is terrible for the environment, but it was beautiful to see. And I hope that, you know what? There should be some sustainable confetti out there. Maybe I will invent that. Yeah. Or if you're watching this in the chat and you are an inventor, I give you permission to take that idea because confetti, if it was biodegradable and maybe it like dropped down and planted seeds or something, like what if the confetti was seeds? It could be like that paper Hmm. that you get as a card sometimes that says, plant me, I have wildflowers. Exactly. Exactly. That would be cool. (laughs) And then people could just take it home and be like, yo, I'm going to plant this. Yes. Um, So so after you finish these, uh, looks like we have some people that would like to see food photography and um, and then someone said the park photos. Okay, for sure. Good suggestions, chat. Thank you. So right now I'm just going by memory to create the imagery that feels closest to what I remember seeing in that moment and also combining that with how it actually felt to be there. And so some descriptors I would use was euphoric and elated and uh, what else? Um, Present and it was like a very collective experience. You know, when you're Mm. at a concert with hundreds of people, you're just like, wow, this we're all experiencing the same thing together. It's very special. Yes. And And was this outside? This was outside. I think it was... uh, in berkeley Mm. at like one of those big outdoor arenas i forget the actual venue's name but i was like front row it was so much fun i went by myself and i met some really fantastic people there i just had a blast i love this this must have been like 2016 or something too which is cool because it's a really old photo and it looks like a painting (laughs) yeah (laughs) which i like you know and so that goes back to what i was saying before about like you know whatever quality of image you have you can still create something beautiful with it it's just about the eye and and the composition and and really what you're trying to achieve which is like creating a relationship with your memories totally so again we're reducing some of the noise adding a little bit sharpness back in there and now it feels like much silkier this would be a really fun one to paint later too Mm-hmm. yeah i'm gonna have Ooh, to revisit that, that. <laughs> oh wow let's see how that's looking so far in comparison it's just such a different feeling like the yeah. purples are really cool i also just i love a teal i love teal i kind of really like both versions actually like even Me the original too. one it's just again it's just different feelings and so there's no right or wrong it's just like whatever you're feeling in that moment yeah it would be really cool to paint these as a series exactly exactly yeah you're i hope that uh this moment becomes one of those like flashbacks where it's like in 10 years you're you're all coming to my my live exhibition right of all of my (laughs) paintings and then and then someone comes up to me and shows me this clip and they're like hey remember when you said you would do this and you did it that's that's cool (laughs) Oh, I love that. That is going to be a great memory in the future. <laughs> Absolutely. So we can push this photo pretty far. And I'm I'm going to have a lot of fun in this color grading module right here because it's one of these abstract photos. And so there's no right or wrong. And you can actually just push it as far as you want. So let's see what effects we can get when we just change up these different attributes here. Right now I am in the shadow color grading module and it's just like adding all of these cool colors into the shadows and kind of like it there. Let's let's see what we want to do with the highlights here. Anyone in the chat, do you have a favorite Tame Impala song? What song do you think was playing in this moment? Yes, let us know. Yeah, we're getting some fun effects. Whoa. Feels a little bit cosmic now, which is fun. I love the different colors coming into it. Ooh. Whoa. So if I do that and then I completely bring down 
the highlights and the whites it just looks so cool and abstract and what's cool is i could even use this as a digital collage asset later down the line too i could blend two images and i think it would create some really cool textures so i'm gonna try that later tonight <laughs> I can't wait to see what you create after this. I feel like you have so many good ideas going right now. I'm feeling activated. I'm feeling <laughs> super activated. <laughs> yes, I love it. Wow. Okay, I'll stop there. Let's see again a comparison. Yep. Mm. You can see the details of a lot more of these colors now than before which feels like success to me, you know? Yeah. Let's yeah. sync up these two images that were from the same moment as well and see. That's nice too. Okay. Maybe this one as well that's next to it. Actually, a concert photo. Yeah. Feels a little bit... Oh. It needed more contrast mm. because this is a person and the stage bringing down the exposure. That feels pretty good for an iPhone photo. Yeah. I am not mad at it. It has very cool vibes to it. The best vibes. I'm all about vibes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so the people asked for food photography. Let's Let's give the people what they want. We're going to go back to these submissions here. Yeah, we've got options. Let's see. Let's do this. Let's say you made yourself the most delicious meal and it, you made it beautiful as well and you want to show it off. But like your photo doesn't really encapsulate exactly how it made you feel. You're like, oh, this kind of falls flat. Lightroom will help you enhance it. <laughs> <laughs> the most powerful tool. The most powerful tool. So first and foremost, I think I just want to crop in on this image because this food basket on the top right corner is a bit distracting. I want the focus to really be this plate in front of us. And so I might even just create a horizontal edit for you here. Even though when I often edit, I'm editing for Instagram and so I will crop it vertically. But for the sake of this, I think that this will give you guys a lot more to chew on uh, horizontally. And I can always uncrop it later if I want. Um, but yeah, this looks so delicious. Wow. Uh, let's see what we can do to really enhance this image. So I'm just going straight into bringing these black tones down to create more contrast. And then bringing the whites down. It's not terribly unbalanced, actually. So the most we're doing is kind of polishing this because it's already pretty even. If we want it to be really dramatic, you could create all of that shadow, but I don't think you need to unless you're trying to be like super artistic with it. I would just leave it in a pretty neutral space there. Uh, let's check out how to bring out more detail. Whenever I want to bring out more detail and things are feeling super contrasty in a way I don't like, I just like bring down the contrast by a lot. Mm -hmm. And I find that you can see a lot more of the details in the image. But sometimes high contrast feels good. So again, it's it's really about trusting your eye and and doing what is necessary to achieve the vision you see in your mind. Um, but that's all through practice. And yeah, the more you practice, the more you get better. It's, it's, a, it's a practice. That's why they call art a practice. Yes, that is so, so true. And always a good reminder to hear because I think it's easy to see something that you aspire to and wonder why you're not quite there yet or or look at inspiration and be like, that's exactly what I want to create. But you can't get there without practicing and without honing in on your craft. And again, why these streams are so important to continue to improve your knowledge and improve your 
ideas and your inspiration and all of the things to get to where you want to be. And it's yeah. all practice. A hundred percent. It's all practice. This is looking great already. Yeah. Um, I just boosted the green tones and made them a lot more saturated, which surprisingly doesn't look super unnatural to me. It actually looks pretty natural to what, um, what I remember seeing or what I would see. And so it's cool because, you know, iPhones, they kind of do shoot a little bit flat, but that's why this tool is so powerful is you can bring out those, that saturation that like you would see it in real life. And yeah, just trust yourself, trust your eye. It's, it doesn't have to be overthought too much. So yeah, I don't know about you, but I am ready for brunch. Um, oh, I am struggling right now. I am starving. <laughs> oh my gosh. This looks so good. <laughs> Maybe food photography was a bad idea. <laughs> I know. Well, I, you know, look at this. We're going to actually just savor our food so much more after this. It's going to be yeah. great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is this is really fun, guys, because now I feel like I would be so stoked to show this off. Like if I made this meal, man, the world would know. <laughs> but I Iman made it. <laughs> Plot twist. Iman Benet, plant-based chef. It? So this is actually, well, this is not completely plant-based because that is indeed an egg. But these are plantains and I believe it was like a, a chilaquiles situation. Mm. It was so good. That looks amazing. Yeah. And, and you did the photo justice. It's, it's gorgeous. It looks just as good as it was in real life. Um, another fun meal here. This is, I believe, a plant-based version of a pasta. I think this is mushrooms in the image. Mm. Um, Iman is very inspired by like Italian food. And so, yeah, more food. Food <laughs> is, I'm like, is so no. good. <laughs> I just okay, we'll, we'll do this one. And then we'll do something else. That way no, we're not starving. Hey, it's, it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like the audience might feel good about like, I think we can all be professional photographers if we really wanted to. Like you can, you can take photos like this with your phone. This is literally a phone photo. And I believe she's just set up the plate like on a black piece of board and set it up next to the window it can be that easy this looks pretty nice and if she wanted to advertise this meal or if you know you wanted to like approach a restaurant or something if you're a freelancer like myself and want to create work for yourself you could be like hey i can take some really nice food photos for your restaurant here's some examples of what you do by yourself at home and that's yeah. that's a that's a quick gig you know you don't need a DSLR. You could really, really make some nice menu photos just with your phone and Lightroom. Just that alone makes it feel so much more dramatic in a good way. Yeah, it really does. Wow. Amazing. All right, let's uh, work with some of these other submissions here that we got. I know someone had mentioned the park photos. Oh, yeah. Which park photos did I have? I think they were the ones that I curated. Let's mm -hmm. check those out. Yes. These are Echo Park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. So I remember there being like a really gorgeous sunset this day. And this photo is not reflecting that at all. So let's see if we can bring that vibe back. Mm, it's pretty shadowed, so I'm going to lift some of the shadows just off tops, and then I'm going to do the opposite with the highlights. I'm going to bring them down, and then I'm going to bring the whites down as well. That exposed a lot of detail in the image already. Feeling better about, you know, the contrast there. Going to bring down the contrast a little bit. Not too much. That actually looks nice. And hmm, I see some pinks and oranges on the horizon. So let's see if I can accentuate that with some tint. Uh, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Neither did that. Maybe if I bring down the exposure a lot more. 
that feels better now i'm gonna just go down to this calibration module and see if i can make actually no i'm not gonna do that i'm going to go up to let's see where am i going hmm okay this is what i was going to do hue saturation and luminance we are going to change the hue of the oranges to be more pink and then we are going to change the hue of the blue to be a little bit uh, i want it to be a little bit more purple so maybe yeah that's too purple okay about there this is a really fun module because i feel like this is where you have the most control is like switching up those specific hues makes a huge difference yeah that's definitely my favorite module in lightroom like i love playing this stuff in there because it can change the overall feel of an image so easily a hundred percent i love it too it's just like wow this is already looking so much better um, another thing that I like to do is bump up luminance. So let's see what I want to be more luminous here in this specific section. It's not doing exactly what I want it to do with the greens, but maybe it's because I need more saturation in the green. Let's go ahead and add that in there. And then now I'm going to slide down to that calibration tool and just bump up the saturation here in the greens as well. Yeah. Just adjusting this hue here as well. I kind of like to do everything kind of hand in hand. Hmm. And again, I'm just feeling into this moment. Yeah. Scrolling back up, I'm like wondering if adding warmth will mm -hmm. feel better. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. And then I'm going to bring that down now we just have so many different versions we could bring out now it's like that's actually what it felt like i think more so we're gonna bring down the exposure again that feels like a sunset to me yeah mm -hmm. do you know what time of year this was taken this must have been a couple of years ago actually um must have been like fall okay cool yeah i it reminds me of like the november time in la where it was mm. just kind of starting to get a tiny bit cold and relative cold is relative but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i remember that feeling of it starting to be around the holidays and going for walks in echo park and for some reason like the lighting here made me really think of that I'm glad it brought up a sentimental memory. Memory. I was going to say moment. Started to say memory. Moment or memory for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. This is just so much more full. You know, yeah. it feels like, uh, yeah, it feels, it's, it's really insane to me how. <laughs> I'm just blown away every time. I'm like, what? <laughs> I know. I know. Isn't it incredible? Like, and even these just not even being raw photos, just from your phone. And you can still create this incredible edit and create a whole feeling from the image. Really unbelievable. That's pretty nuts because it literally looked like this in real life. And the fact that I can bring this out into something that is tangible from my memory makes me feel like a scientist yeah or an alchemist rather i don't know yeah yeah magician yeah. type energy i can smell the picture right <laughs> absolutely Those la nights there was like such a great smell in the air it would be kind of city but mixed with Mixed with like orange blossoms or something. It's always so nice. Wow. Now I'm just, I just feel at peace. <laughs> yeah, me too. Looking I'm at like, this. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so that's 
that's how to enhance a memory, folks. You really can can bring out what it literally felt like and looked like in any given moment. And you have access to that in your pocket 90% of the time. And the other 10%, it's in your hand. So yeah. <laughs> that um, I wanted is crazy. to ask you mm-hmm. about the travel pictures that are on your website because it looks like you've been doing this in uh, for many of the places that you've gone to. Are a lot of those photos from your phone or from a camera? I would say mostly from my camera, but okay. now I'm feeling tempted to add a section of iPhone photography because it is a whole other vibe. Like, yeah, it's really cool, really fun. Like, I feel like that could also be a service that I can offer people too, is like enhancing their their iPhone photos if they don't want to do it themselves. So, yeah. something I know, I'm thinking I feel, about I now. I feel like this whole thing could get super sci-fi like very eternal sunshine of the spotless mind or something you could help people bring their memories out through the editing of the photos (laughs) literally wow I did used to want to be a psychologist and therapist and Ah. you know I do think of my specific like art practices as art therapy and like art alchemy and so I will be your art therapist Yes. I'm ready. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just copy and pasted this edit onto this image from the previous image. Basically, the same moment, just a different perspective. And within two seconds, I have this gorgeous sunset to look at when before it was blown out. Like, you know that feeling when you take a photo on your phone and you're like, oh, this doesn't do the moment justice. And you're Mm -hmm. like, "Mm." but, you know, obviously that encourages encourages you to be more present. But now you can remember that even if it didn't do it justice in that moment, you can bring it justice by taking it a step further and elevating it through color grading in Lightroom. So something to think about. Now you can go back and look through all your old iPhone photos and and yeah enhance them and see if you feel how you felt in that moment time travel (laughs) totally gonna do that i think that is just awesome i'm gonna put all of my iphone photos into my computer and and play around with them this afternoon i'm so glad yay please send me (laughs) some of the edits that you do i definitely will yeah by the way guys guys gals bays and thems i want to make sure that i'm being gender inclusive so Feel free to remind me (laughs) anytime I say guys, I'm trying to break that habit, but um, everyone. Yeah. Feel free to tag me on Instagram, editing your own iPhone photos live right now as well. Post them to your story, tag me. I want to see your edits. Like this is so much fun and I can't wait to see what you guys are doing at what everyone is doing. Sorry, I did it again. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think that would be super cool to... Uh, have people from the chat and anyone watching this to uh, share your photos somehow, whether I think, I don't know if you're opening direct communication, if that's okay, or maybe if you have like a hashtag people could use. It's really cool because I think we can all connect over these photos and over these memories. A hundred percent. I'm going to think of a hashtag by the end of the stream that everyone Perfect. can use. All right, I let's see. Um, what are we working with now? Hmm. Someone in this in the chat said I love plantains. Me too. Okay, I'm still thinking about food. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know about you, but I love to just snap photos of kind of anything that I find aesthetically pleasing when I'm just out in the world. And this feels like one of those moments and A lot of the time it's like, I have such a painter mind. Like I'm like, this would be so fun to paint. And if it would be that for me, I will take a photo of it. So let's see if I were to like edit this and then paint it later, how would I do it? Let's let's explore. Now we're going to get a little bit more creative because this is kind of an abstract image. It doesn't necessarily have any sentimental meaning other than the fact I just enjoy the contrast of the pink and the green. And yeah, the foliage versus like built environment. Mm. So let's explore that feeling. 
I really like to accentuate like all of the textures and the shape when it comes to images like this. And therefore, I, I want to create a little bit more contrast than what we're seeing now by bringing down the exposure and bringing up the highlights and the whites. Nice. Now I'm going to lift some of the shadows and I'm going to add back in some of the black there. Awesome. That's already feeling nice. Uh, we're going to add or switch up the tone and the hue and the green and add some more saturation there. And then I feel called to go back up to that hue, luminance, and saturation section. I feel like I want to switch up the hue of the pink. And in order to do that, I think I will need to toggle the magenta. Yeah, that's right. And maybe some of the purple. As you can see, it's creating some subtle changes. Yeah, that's nice. I feel like Bob Ross right now. I know. <laughs> I randomly saw that Bob Ross channel was on at a restaurant I was at the other day and I got totally sucked into it. And I'm like, well, why do I not put this on more often? <laughs> yeah, I think we all need a little bit more like painter yeah. energy in our lives. Everyone just go home and paint. <laughs> yeah. And but if watch you can, Bob Ross. <laughs> and watch Bob Ross. Or even better, like continue to edit in Lightroom and just turn on Bob Ross in the background. I'm sure it'll inspire you. That sounds like a perfect way to spend a rainy afternoon. I need that so badly. <laughs> I'm kind of excited for the winter. I really enjoy like kind of just cozying up and doing stuff like that. And I feel like I get the most creative work done in those times. I could not agree more. I was thinking about that too, because I love summer so much, but it hasn't rained here in months. And I feel like it's just so wonderful for doing creative work when it's a little rainy or colder out and you can cuddle up and get some inspiration flowing. I, I tend to like not make anything actually in the summer. I'm always out exploring, which is good for my soul, but mm -hmm. I'm not really making much this time of year. Yeah, there's, I, there's something that I've made peace with recently, which is that there's a season for everything. And there's yeah. sometimes a season for creating, and then there's a season for like inspiration intake. And then there's the season for rest and integration. And yeah, it's, I just try to make peace with it so I don't feel as bad for not yeah. having as much output as I normally would in like my my creation season in my inspiration season. I think that's such good advice. Yeah, we've got to cut ourselves slack. Like this whole process of late stage capitalism is really difficult, but we make do. Yes, absolutely agree. So I'm kind of just doing, I don't even know here now, it's getting a little bit abstract and I'm I'm intrigued to see what some of these, uh, these presets can do for me now, now that it's a bit more of like an abstract image. And as I'm scrolling through some of these, that feels really nice actually. All of these, you can really just not go wrong with a preset because they're just gonna give you something different every time. Yeah. Hmm. How about a beach image? This isn't necessarily the beach, but it's palm trees. Let's let's see what we can do with this one. And yeah, sometimes when I'm feeling like I don't want to necessarily dive right into like, I guess, my own custom adjustments, I like to kind of feel into an image just by scrolling over some of the presets to see what kind of mood I even want to dive into. And so that's a good way to kind of get the creative juices flowing of like what's possible. What yeah. direction do I want to go in? You know, I could go like this very stark, bright direction, which I actually like a lot. I think that feels good. And this feels a little bit more commercial too. Like I could totally crop this and, you know, put like some messaging 
mm. in text in the top like who knows like visit los angeles i don't know yeah. <laughs> whatever you can um imagine putting it or or i could put like a casting call on it or i could write a poem on it there's so many things you can do with imagery like this when it's like a little bit more generic and leaves space for storytelling yeah something like that so let's scroll back down let's make these palm trees pop a little bit more i want to see the green pop and i want it to be a little bit more light green yeah mm, like that kind of gives I a film like vibe that. yeah i like that energy yeah that's cool there's so much you could do it's just it's overwhelming sometimes which is why you just <laughs> got to stay present in the moment <laughs> it really really is because sometimes you start to see these looks and you're like oh i could go that way i could go that way i could go that way and you end up liking multiple looks and <laughs> i want to just duplicate my photo five times and make each one and then and then be like which one do you like best but i i that, do that all the time i am yeah. so guilty of that like, <laughs> it's I know. crazy i know it's very easy to do especially when all these different looks look so good truly truly there's endless options endless directions you could go like it's crazy how everything looks good it just gives you a, a different feeling every time mm -hmm. you know if i really wanted to create some this feels a little bit more like dramatic and feels like uh what's the word melancholy almost yeah you're like oh blue hour i love blue hour though like blue hour feels good but it's cool because yeah. This is obviously not blue hour, but I can give it that feeling. So if you ever do a shoot like in the middle of the day and you want to give it that blue hour feeling, you can totally do that. Yeah. I just want to put a little moon over the palm trees. <laughs> oh my gosh. We should totally collab sometime. Like, oh, I would love to. That would I be love so love your style. That'd be so much fun. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, collab in the works, y'all. Yeah. I know. We have lots to talk about offline. I'm going to message you about a ton We of do. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't wait to get into all of the mystical topics with you. I feel like your work is so mystical. Mine is too. Yeah. So fun. I think we could create something really cool together. I think so too. I'm excited to do that. What are your favorite things to edit usually? Um,. Uh, all sorts of things, but I really, I mean, definitely nature tends to be kind of the biggest topic, uh, in my work. And then, um, I seem to be drawn towards certain animals like turtles, jellyfish, butterflies, um, trying to think of what else. Yeah. You, if you look at my work, you start to see things kind of repeated, uh, mushrooms, very cool. Um, and then yeah, I think I sometimes I just can't get away from it. I feel drawn to those things. <laughs> That's so cool because it's like all of the archetypes that your mind uses to tell those stories. And mm. it's like thematically, I wonder what subconsciously that means for you. I know. I know. We'll have to talk and I want to hear all about this because yeah. I'm very, very curious. That's going to be a fun conversation. I love studying like archetypes and you know, the subconscious mind. Yeah. So right now we're looking at a photo I took in Paris of the Seine River. And originally, let's take a look. It's very like, not dreary, but it's just not fun and colorful. It feels like it could have a very like, what's the word? Um not mystical like olden day kind of energy mm. and so i kind of want to play on that like if this was almost medieval like back when there were i don't know like knights and such yeah. <laughs> kings and queens 
So let's play into that like storybook kind of energy. I just want to make it like really vibrant and yeah, let's see. Let's see how we can make that happen. So far, I have adjusted the temperature and added a little bit of a green tint. Now I'm wondering if I want to make that green tint a bit more pink. It's too pink. I'm going to go back to green. Yeah. And then another fun thing I could do if I wanted to, like, I'm looking at this archway and I kind of already like how all of this looks, but I want to adjust the coloring on the archway only. And so this is where I would actually use a brush for my mask and I would brush out where I want the mask to be. So I'm just going to kind of like paint over this archway here. And I can be a little bit messy with it because I can go back and adjust it later as well. But I just want to see how it would look if I were to adjust only the archway. already giving me so much more freedom yeah. to play. Hmm. Okay, now it's feeling like uh, very surrealistic. Which is, you know, what I wanted to get. So, let's see. I made the tint too green and it made it hard for me to actually select a color. But I think... Hmm. Red is fun. Yeah, I feel like cool. it's already looking like it makes more sense. Yeah. So we'll keep it like that. And it looks like I don't even have to really adjust it too, too much because it's not, it's not bleeding out in a way that feels unrealistic so far. So I'm going to leave it there. And if I need to go back and continue to adjust it, I can. Yeah, that um, looks so much better. That's so fun. And then now I kind of want to bring out the water here as well. So let's create another mask with the brush for the water. And you can be so much more like meticulous with this if you want to. But for the sake of this like workshop moment, I'm going to just go over it kind of in a messy way. Yeah, Let's and I think see. depending on how much you feather it and your flow and everything, you can kind of be a bit messier with those masks too. Exactly, yeah. I like to keep the masks pretty feathered, typically. Whoa, that's definitely becoming more saturated. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's reflective of the sky a little bit more now. Yeah. I can't and, believe the beat yeah. for and after. <laughs> I know. That's actually nuts. Like, yeah, the capabilities here are just wild. So I don't want it to look too, too crazy, but I am going to lean a little bit more surrealistic for this edit, which I hope that you all experiment with as well, because there's just so many ways you can manipulate your photos and your memories and like i said before i kind of see the world through this surrealistic lens already so to be able to bring it to life and give myself like a reference point just feels really cool yeah okay i am actually going to adjust this mask a bit and i'm going to click on the minus sign so that i can subtract from it and i'm just going to like erase some of this mask because it adjusted the archway which I didn't want it to when I created the mask for the water a little bit too much so oops and now I can go back and I can add it back in because I accidentally took it out so that's another cool thing is you can add and subtract to your masks even if after you make them with these two tools here yeah that's like so so helpful yeah, and it's cool because you have so much more control 
like once you start using masks like this, like if I really wanted to, I could go ahead and isolate this building as well. But I think we have a pretty good base for like a color composition and color theory. And it's it's feeling more uniform now. Like yeah. I actually put some time into it. Absolutely. So, let's see here. The hue. I'm going to mess with the hue of this red orangey archway now. So we have about six minutes left and just want to let everyone in the chat know if you have any more questions for Amina and or anything else that you want to see before we wrap up. Yeah, let us know. And obviously we'll be back tomorrow too. So if you have any questions that you're going to ruminate on, just come back tomorrow and ask your questions. Yeah. And don't forget, you can watch this as a replay at anytime as well as all of the other adobe live streams they're always there and available for you to learn from and i know mina dropped some serious wisdom today so i would definitely go back and re-watch if you missed any of that please do and let me know if there's anything that spoke to you specifically yes. also tomorrow i actually am really excited because i'm opening up the submissions again and this time i want to specify for like musicians if you want to submit any iphone photos that you'd like me to edit for potential like rollouts for a song or cover art or even like some cool portraits that you have of yourself that you'd like to see artistically edited and elevated send me those i will post on instagram again to give you directions on how to label everything that way i can correctly credit you and we're going to have a lot of fun in tomorrow's stream. I hope you have all had like a blast as much fun as I've had today. And I can't wait to edit with you again tomorrow. So yeah, thanks for being I'm, here. <laughs> I'm totally looking forward to it. And uh, we can keep working on this photo for a few more minutes or if there's anything else that you want to show before we wrap up. Yeah, let's see. This is feeling pretty cool so far so we can leave that and let's start on a new one like why not yeah let's see what we've got hmm so we've got some options here i think this photo of the street is cool or we could do some roses or like a cityscape type photo mm, how about a cityscape that's a fun one yeah let's do that so this one here, again, it's just, it's crazy, like, what you can do with your phone. I can manipulate this in so many different ways. I think I'm going to start with changing up the blue. Yeah, that already looks so fun. Uh, let's add some more hue saturation to the oranges. I'm playing a little bit with... Um, color theory here now blue and orange are i believe complementary colors mm -hmm. yep so that's why you feel serene when you look at this it's like harmonious yeah and then we're gonna bring out some of the highlights i don't actually love that so i'm gonna bring the highlights down and i'm going to lift the shadows so you see those details next we're going to add a little bit more of the whites back in there and lift some of the black points there as well that's already so bright and so fun it feels like again a painting <laughs> it really does it has a, a super cinematic feel yes yes cinematic is like one of my favorite words <laughs> whoa that's really crazy so it's wild how much detail there is already. And it, I, I'm pretty sure I zoomed like really far on this image as well. Let's create some more smoothness with reducing the noise. And let's go back up, bring the exposure down a bit more and make it feel more realistic. Even though it's like a surrealistic color, the tones feel realistic, you know? Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, my natural inclination is just to keep toggling and playing and see how far we could push this. 
that's mm, a really cool totally direction as well time. yeah it's there's so many different ways i'm gonna have to export like 10 versions of these photos later i know <laughs> oh that's cool Ooh, that just gives me such a nice feeling like yeah it feels totally. very uh very epic yeah I love editing so much, especially like creative editing like this. This is how I really like remind myself of the passion I have for photography is like when I get to just play and explore and like let my mind do what it wants to do and kind of lead me like yeah. I'm not even in the driver's seat right now. It's like my subconscious creative mind is just running the show and it feels really good to surrender like that and just have a practice where you can you can like let go a little bit. I couldn't agree more. And it has been such an honor learning from you today. I hope everyone enjoyed this stream as much as I did. Thank you so much, Amina. <laughs> we will be back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific for part two of editing iPhoto iPhone photos. And stick around for this week's Illustrator Creative Challenge with Jack Watson, followed by Sin Logos for a graphic design live stream where you will learn how to design an earth and space inspired pattern in illustrator so thank you again everyone and i hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you tomorrow bye, bye.